All right, and welcome to the 10-Minute Hemp CEO Secrets Podcast. My name is John Stoddard, and this is sponsored by the Hemp Exchange. Today, I have a special guest. He's the first Hemp Association member. Welcome, Tate Hall. He represents the Kentucky Hemp Industries Association and they are serving all the hemp pioneers in Kentucky. Tate, welcome to the show. Hey, John. Thanks for having me aboard. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I really appreciate that. So I want to get in because the association represents a lot of farmers. So what is the association doing for hemp farmers in Kentucky? Well, I think uh, the biggest thing, and we're one of the oldest, uh, you know, hemp industry association chapters in the United States, just now, you know, we're actually having a holiday conference and trade show next week in Murray State and uh, sponsored by Murray State University. It'll be a great show, uh, an educational event for people that are currently in the hemp industry, being a farmer or processor and prospective people wanting to uh, grow hemp into 2020. In a nutshell, I would just say education is key in this industry, no matter what facet that you're in. I think one thing that sets our organization apart far more than you know any other association that I know of is the advocacy that we do on the state level and on the federal level. But more importantly, as an educational platform for those individuals wanting to possibly get in the hemp industry, what are some of the challenges and pitfalls that you need to be looking out for going into next year? And then, of course, too, networking with those that have been in the industry, that have been advocates, and not just be told what you want to hear, be told what's actually happening. I think there's a big versus in that conversation. How many members do you have in the association right now? You know, roughly, and just as an organization overall, We've got over uh, 2,000 members across the board in the state level. We're close to uh, 600 members in our chapter, you know, where we are the biggest. There's board members that sit on both sides of the aisle, and we've really been able to form good relationships with the Kentucky Hemp Farmer Association, for instance. You know, and, and whenever I came into the association, we were really geared towards, you know, retail and processing. The past 18 months, we've really tried to shift for farmer education and of course without good crops there is no industry you know and without a farmer you're not going to have an industry you know in the future so right um, that's one thing i think that people have been prevalent to find when somebody starts it goes like i'm going to raise my hand and i'm going to grow some hemp our former uh, tobacco growers a lot of them are i'm going to do five acres what, what happens is they go i'm going to do with a hundred acres old adage is biting off with what you can chew uh, that's number one. If you've never grown hemp before, I would highly suggest that you not grow 100 acres your first year. I don't care who you think you are or who you, who you think you can know and get away with doing this and that. There are challenges, and I can tell you the people that have fallen on their face have been the people that are too arrogant and stubborn to ask for help. And just keep in mind, just because you grow 50 acres or 100 acres, well, doesn't necessarily mean that it's all going to be sold right away. I mean, that's any commodity that you grow on a farm, whether it's cattle, uh, chickens, you know, grain, uh, watermelons, and, and hemp, you know. And, and yeah, normally you have your crop sold or a good idea that's going to be sold that, that there's a market for it before you start planting it. Correct. And a, a good farmer will gamble. You know, I know a lot of tobacco farmers will gamble because that's how the industry is. But with hemp, I'll just say it's a brand new industry, Okay. And there have been loose commitments that turn into no commitments, you know, and it, it doesn't take a lot of people finding that out whenever you start talking to a couple of farmers. So I'll just caution people, you know, bite off of what you can chew, bite off of what you can afford to gamble on. Don't bet your farm. If you're not a farmer, I would, uh, hemp is not an easy crop to grow, contrary to what anybody else will tell you. So I would start out doing something small or get into farming and then maybe get into Yeah, and it's got to be dried later. Now, you guys have the benefit in the Kentucky states of being former tobacco where you have a drying facility to do that, right? You know, the majority of farmers that are growing in this state, you know, I think the blessing that we have versus any other state, and, and I'll include Tennessee even though they're kind of a rival of ours, but the big thing that we have in the southeast is the drying infrastructure. We have the tobacco barns. We have the planters. We have everything that you need to grow tobacco with and do it well. We have access to labor that 
many states will cost you an arm and a leg to, to get. But, you know, I think the big thing is the land and the drying facilities is, is a good land, not just land that you're growing hemp in a desert, right? Hemp has certain uh, characteristics that it needs to take to grow. You need the right amount of water. You need sufficient light, of course. It, it, it's a certain type of soil that really takes for it to grow very well. And there's spots in the United States that are going to do better than uh, there are less than advertised genetics going around and of course people hawking seeds and people uh, selling you a book of goods that are uh, false you know so I very much recommend you go with something that's stable uh, a and reliable source a reliable exactly yeah. and the best thing you could do period getting into this business is talking to somebody that's grown this before has been in the industry for a few years to really give you the lay, lay low or join an association like ours and meet those people directly. Have you seen some successes with your uh, Kentucky uh, farmers? Absolutely. I think uh, this year, you know, the, the thing I think about farming is the better the year you have, no matter what you grow. Sometimes that means changes in the market and not the best way. This year we saw record years as far as yields per acre in, in portions of the state of Kentucky and portions of the state of Tennessee. Does it sell that? Well, right now we're at uh, December the 12th. Everybody's really getting to the stripping season, bagging it up, getting the C of A's needed. Um, still a little early on the market. Right now, it's, uh, you know, I've been in this business for a couple of years. I can tell you, you know, sometimes people don't realize too growing this, you might have to wait till February or March to be able to sell a good portion of your crop, depending on what the market's going to bear. And of course, the effort that it's going to take to get it to where it needs to go, where there are. So the last question, you and I talked after that face-to-face -face auction. What happened there? Personally, I just think it was poorly ran. Um, you know, and anybody that was there, they can give you a better idea of that. There weren't really any vetted buyers there, um, actually none. The other thing is, too, whenever you have 71 lots of hemp to sell in a day, and I mean lot being, you know, Farmer John from Clarksville, Tennessee, Farmer uh, – Joe from Paintsville, Kentucky, and on, on down the line, uh, it's hard for you to go through that much marketed material in a day to list, let alone have an auction in that environment. I don't really, I didn't really see, and of course, this was a brand new thing. Big uh, takeaway was there wasn't just enough time, you know, to really vet and see what that material was. And if you know anything about the hemp industry, what you know, what's a C of A? What lab did you use that to, to, uh, to pull the test from? Were they certified? Do you have a pesticide report? Do you have a heavy metals report? You know, are the bags labeled? Is it all truthful to one farm? You know, are there, is there spot milled and mold in, in certain, you know, bag lots? That is a crap load of new questions that people just have, don't understand that need to be asked. And it was good that something like that happened, but I think um, doing a due diligence or using a service like Hemp, Hemp Exchange, uh, you know, thank you. <laughs> it is uh, you know something that has some verification to it would be uh, ideal. And also, too, I say trusted brokers. Um, there are unverified brokers. There are unscrupulous people in this industry. Um, but the serious buys and transactions, you're always going to have, I don't care if you're selling strawberries, if you're selling cars, um, if you're whatever you're selling, there has to be independent agents and independent audit uh, people to be able to go through that material and vet that material, especially when you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of commodity or millions of dollars worth of commodity. You know, there's logistics at play too. Where is it going? Is it insured? Um, there are a lot of check marks that I don't think people really have grasped yet to be able to be a true well, player. These are processes that need to be put into the supply chain. Tate, uh, that's all the time we have. I want to thank you for joining us. Tate Hall can be found at Michael Tate Hall on LinkedIn. Excuse me. He is the president of the Kentucky Hemp Industries Association.